Welcome to DBO TV. It's been a while. My name is uh, NCSU Duncan. As I said, you're watching DBO TV, and it indeed has been a while. It's probably been over a month since the last real episode. I did one right before Christmas, uh, but it sort of devolved into just chatting with the, uh, the chat. Uh, I was kind of unprepared. But anyway, welcome back to DBO TV. I've got a lot in store for you this week. Uh, gonna walk through the Bungie Weekly update. Just a couple things from that. Uh, some new uh, information on Destiny out there from a couple different gaming magazines. Uh, and then uh, I've got a pretty cool new idea. Uh, sort of game show thing called Beat the Chat. So let's kick things off, shall we? Welcome to DBO TV, the official, sort of, as official as it gets, uh, show for destiny.bungie.org, my favorite Bungie fan site. Uh, my name is NCSU Duncan, and uh, my guest this week is also my guest from the last sort of episode, Xenos. I invited him back on uh, for a second shot. This time I'm a little more prepared. Uh, so let's uh, pop over to Skype. And uh, I'll give him a call, and hopefully he will answer. Let's see if this works. There he is. All right. Let me turn my volume up a little bit. Xenos, how's it going? Good. How you doing? Pretty great, actually. Let me resize this window. See if that. Nope, nope. There we go. All right, there he is. Oh, how's it going, man? Not bad, not bad. You're sitting back in front of your uh, Xbox One, correct? <laughs> yep. Chatting through the power of Connect. Uh, yeah, actually using the microphone this time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, it sounds pretty good. I, I suppose next week I probably need to, to try and call somebody using a PlayStation 4. Uh, I, I assume the PlayStation camera can do video calls as well. I don't know. I don't have one. <laughs> does, it, does it have Skype on the PS4? I haven't even looked. Actually, probably not. So that, that might make it really hard to do. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to research that. But you know, thank you for coming back on the show. It sort of had the the lost episode there right before uh, the holiday break, uh, where I was just really tired and unprepared. So it was it was still fun though. I enjoyed it. <laughs> the fabled Christmas special. Yeah, the Christmas special that will not see the light of day. It's, it's actually <laughs> I actually managed to make something worse than the Star Wars holiday special. Uh, so mission accomplished there. Uh, I don't know. That holiday special is probably the worst thing ever. The the, <laughs> the Star Wars one. <laughs> that's true. Somebody actually got paid money for that, so I, yeah, I guess yeah. that's sort of the difference. I'm doing this pro bono. <laughs> but uh, so anyway, so I guess uh, let's dive into some Destiny news, shall we? I I sent you the the PowerPoint sort of the very last minute. Uh, I don't know if you got it, but yeah, uh, we got it should be able to, to follow along either way. So let's see if I can do, go here. That's not what I wanted. There we go, all right. Let's get this, yes, yeah, so Xenos is my guest. And the Bungie Weekly update came back to celebrate the new year. All the Bungie staffers, if 
finally went back to work and started working on the game again. <laughs> um, so yeah, so Deej sort of started off talking about that, talking about everybody shifting desks around, and um, and sort of ended his uh, his little speech there with hints at the the Bungie Winter Pentathlon uh, that's coming up pretty soon. So it'll be interesting to to see uh, you know if they get the webcam up for that and uh, what kind of shenanigans they get up to there. He also hinted that they'll be playing uh, Destiny quite a bit in this year's Pentathlon. I think they did last year as well, but I'm sure it'll play a much bigger role uh, now that they've got more things uh, online. But uh, Deej did manage to, to scrounge up this uh, screenshot here of a hunter, you know, sort of taking a break. Uh, I wonder uh, if this is uh, one of those emotes that we'll be able to use. What do you think, Xenos? You think we'll be able to, to do this in the game, or is this a developer-only kind of thing? I hope so. That that knife in the dirt, that would be so awesome to be able to do in-game. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty sweet. Now, I wonder if that's part of the emote, or uh, I wonder if you can just like throw the knife at the ground, uh, like the normal attack, and it'll stick yeah. there. That would be really cool. Yeah, I wondered the same thing after we saw that knife throw. I was like, did they throw it there, or did... <laughs> is it part of a like an emote system like in in MMOs? I don't know. Yeah, uh, a uh, nice little nice little tidbit uh, that I noticed in the uh, the Bungie.net thread attached to the weekly update is that this particular hunter is uh, Elliot Gray. Uh, that Deej did a breaking in on him. I guess it was almost a year ago, uh, but he was one of the guys that we were hanging out with at PAX. Uh, yeah. And he actually uh, has posted on DBO forum a couple times. His name is uh, After Completion, uh, so I thought that was kind of neat. Yeah, he's the he's the one that uh, told us that we had the language right, that we had the name of the, the yeah, fallen that's, house. That's right. I think uh, didn't he say that uh, he helped like design that shirt, the the yeah. fallen shirt? Yeah, that was that was pretty cool talking to him about that. Elliot Elliot's a pretty cool guy. Um, so anyway, so yeah, so so Deej gave us this. You know, nice little screenshot, and then he also went on and talked about uh, the beta update, which really wasn't anything new there, just sort of reiterating uh, the things we already knew, and that the beta is coming this summer, uh, but no no concrete date yet. Um, and then one last thing from uh, the, the Bungie Weekly update, Deej sort of goes into his usual mail sack uh, uh, question and answer stuff, and the, the question that really stuck out to me is from Hylobos, who asked, who is the director? Uh, Deej sort of, I think he hinted at uh, the director before, uh, but uh, Deej's answer is, the director is not a who, it is a what. Think of it as a guide. Think of it as an oracle. It's equal parts war plan and treasure map. Um, so when, I can't remember who, who it was, somebody at Bungie first mentioned the director, and I kind of thought that it was um, that one... Uh, character from the Destiny trailer that's talking to the warlock. You know, he's he's got like the the long flowing robes and the, with the, the Destiny tricorn on him. I, uh, my guess was that that guy was the director, but this makes it sound more like the director is you know your sort of in-game map, uh, so to speak. I don't know. The it's uh, interesting. It sounds. It also makes me think of like uh, the Left 4 Dead AI director, but that doesn't quite seem to fit as much here. But I don't know. I actually wondered if it was the name of the the app they're going to come out with for your phone, so that you can like kind of follow along and Ooh, join with that's, friends. That's that's uh that's a pretty good point. I like that. Um, huh. Or like, if uh, it's something that's sort of in universe as well, like like the the phone app, but also like something that our guardians would talk about the director versus just just being some sort of out-of-game UI kind of thing. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that could be cool. So, yeah, I'd like to hear more about the director, but, you know, we've, we've still got nine months to go. Whoa! <laughs> you I, just zoomed in. I have oh, no idea why I did that. Give, give everybody a whole <laughs> face full of Xenos. There we go. <laughs> Using that patented Connect zooming in technology. Uh, <laughs> face tracking. Just randomly it. decided to kick in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it can be kind of finicky, but... Seems to work pretty well. It, it it bugs out a lot when you have multiple people in the room, uh, <laughs> or dogs. I, I think it like it tracks movement more than face, really. Um, but anyway, so yeah, that's pretty much covered everything. I wanted to talk about. Oh, oh man, he's all over the place now. 
<laughs> that's uh, that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about uh, in regards to the weekly update. Uh, the one other bit of bungee news that we got straight from the source uh, was um, this guy, and it was I'm gonna pronounce his last name terribly wrong, but it's um, what was it? It's, uh, Daniel Akinpog, <laughs> something like Akinpog, <laughs> something like that, and he's uh, the environment test lead over at Bungie, so uh, if you didn't see that article, you should definitely check it out. It's uh, pretty interesting. But I, I sort of want to keep this moving quickly, because I definitely want to get to the, the quiz show. So let's, uh, let's sort of blaze on to sort of uh, the gaming press magazine sort of stuff. So Games had a uh, eight-page article on Destiny, and uh, I haven't actually read it myself, but judging from, I'm, I think Claude uh, downloaded the digital version and checked it out and discovered that it well it really wasn't much new to this article but you know if uh, if you're in the UK uh, pick up a games and, and see if there's anything new uh, that maybe uh, it, it actually it finally became available on iOS oh okay and I downloaded it oh yeah <laughs> yeah it was pretty much a summary nothing yeah. really new oh okay so I mean it it sort of makes sense uh, Game Informer got all of the exclusive. They sort of scooped them all up last month. Uh, yeah. Sort of filled December with a bunch of stuff. Um, but I also wanted to mention that IGN held a uh, held their most anticipated games of 2014 sort of voting thing. And I remember seeing, uh, I don't know, various Twitter accounts trying to tell everybody to vote for Destiny. I think maybe the Destiny the Game account and, and the Bungie account as well. So it looks like uh, the Bungie community managed to rock the vote sufficiently to make Destiny the the number one shooter, most anticipated shooter, as selected by the readers. Yeah, I was surprised by that. A lot of, a lot of the other ones, I think, uh, most of the other sites, it was tight fall. So I was yeah. kind of surprised Destiny won out in IGN, and well, that's I mean, pretty much look, the only site it won out on. If you look at the top three here... Destiny's the only one that's going to be available on PlayStation 4, so maybe that, you know, more broad uh, platform base kind of helped it out a little bit. I do think it's funny that, you know, the picture that they used for Destiny is, is from the box art, but the way it's cropped like that, it looks just like the Halo 5 picture down in the corner. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> I don't know, I'm still not a fan of that box art, but I'll, I'll live with it. <laughs> I really don't care about the box art. It's it's the game inside that that'll uh, I'll really be critical about. Yeah, we've been through that all before. I mean, Bioshock Infinite had that huge thing. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Their crappy crappy box art. <laughs> but uh, let's see. Uh, moving on, uh, somebody, I think it was uh, the French Destiny fan site. I want to. I'm gonna get this, this name wrong too. Um, where was it? I lost it. But anyway, they uh, they dug up these uh, Game Informer sort of not screenshots, but custom built Guardian renders. So we have a bunch of different images of uh, the various uh, armor pieces and weapons that you'll be able to carry around, and it really just shows off the, the kind of variety that we're gonna see wandering around Destinies. Everybody, you know, you look at the, the Halo games, and there are a bunch of different armor permutations there, but generally they still looked the same at, at the base, but a bunch of these uh, these Guardians look way different. You know, we've got this one with the giant unicorn spike on the front. Um, let's see what else. Do, do, do. I love yeah, this that, pose here. So was it? It's know? cool because... It's cool because... Uh, you know, in Halo 3 and Halo Reach, you saw most people using the really unique ones. And even Halo 4. Because, mm -hmm. like, the one with the, the big unicorn spike in Halo 4, that was one that you saw everywhere. So it's <laughs> cool because we're not going to have that in, in uh, Destiny, where it's like everybody's running around with the one piece because it's the most unique. There's, like, hundreds and thousands of super unique pieces instead of just variations. Yeah. yeah it'll, it'll definitely be pretty interesting. I wonder what the sort of um, implications of that are in terms of like RAM and like map size because I know that was one of the big limitations on like how many armor permutations 
they could have uh, in the Halo games. So it'd be interesting to see how Bungie is sort of getting around that limitation uh, and having yep. all these different different armor sets because now they've got you know three different uh, Guardian classes to to build for. So that's kind of cool. So yeah, just to scroll through these really quick, you know, we've got this this unicorn guy here. We've got this awesome pose of a, I assume that's a warlock, a female maybe. I don't know. Yeah, looks female. Uh, with the the FWC conduit F3. Um, let's see, we've got this Titan with a nice red gun. I love the different colors here. You know, you've got this kind of bluish armor with the, the bright red gun. Pretty cool. Weapon on the back looks like some sort of shotgun. Kind of neat. Got this gold looking guy, gold looking Titan. And the helmet looks a lot like the Vex, don't you think? Oh, yeah. I, I definitely think that's supposed to be, I don't know if, like, it's supposed to be, like, a Vex armor you, like, uh, turn into a helmet, but it's definitely supposed to look like a Vex. Uh, kind of makes me excited. I hope they have ones like that for the Fallen and the Cabal and all the and all the other races. That would be pretty cool to see somebody wandering around, you know, uh, old Russia with a Fallen-style helmet on. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's see got this guy here and it looks like he's got two weapons on his back or something weird over his shoulder I don't know I guess I guess yeah with the three weapon system now you carry two of them on your back yeah that's what it looks like to me too <laughs> and then next we've got this yellowish Titan pretty standard pose I mean that that looks like that could almost be like a halo Spartan right there and then Another Titan, big blue guy. Uh, this guy we've seen before, but I always love that, that Boba Fett style sort of T uh, visor. And he's got this nice, almost Gallarhorn looking uh, chest piece, which looks pretty cool. Yeah, do you think if there are there going to be armor? For every every uh, exotic weapon that kind of fit in with them, because I thought the same thing. It definitely looks like if yeah, I, I wonder. So is there going to be like a complete set? Yeah, that's that's going to make uh, people that that want to get the complete set really paranoid about trying to find every last piece. Uh, yeah. It could be kind of funny. <laughs> but yeah, I got that guy. I got. Uh, I guess this is a hunter. Well, the sweet looks like a bipod on the front of. Uh, front of that rifle. I wonder if that have if that'll have any sort of in-game uh, attributes to it or if it's just cosmetic, kind of like the sniper rifle from Halo. It's, it has a bipod on it, but nobody ever uses it aside from like maybe that one guy in Halo 2 or something. <laughs> he wasn't a Spartan, so. Yeah, that's right. Um, let's see. Again, nice colors on this uh Hunter. Yeah, Hunter. Bright green, cool gun. All right. So yeah, that does it for for those game informer shots. This next shot is one that we've seen a ton, uh, but it sort of popped up from Game Informer again. Uh, it's the, the Game Informer guys were talking to Ryan Ellis, and Ryan Ellis told them who was responsible for this Destiny Awaits poster, and that was uh, Chris Christopher Barrett, uh, who's the art director at Bungie. Uh, so the Game Informer guys talked to him, and uh, the the funny thing, I think, is that the Game Informer uh, guys, for their article, they used this exact screenshot, which was found, taken by uh, HBO member NSU Soldier when he found it back in 2011. It's like everybody just keeps using this exact screenshot. Nobody goes and, and takes a new one from the game. Uh, very few people actually credit NSU Soldier with the, the discovery, though, so I always like to point that out. Um, but it is kind of funny that talking to Chris Barrett, you know, he said uh, he wasn't sure that the name of the game was still going to be Destiny. Because I guess back when they were making ODST in 2008, 2009, the code name for Destiny was Destiny. Like That was that was the code name. And then I guess later they decided that was going to be the, the real name, so they came up with Tiger as, as the code name. Um, so yeah, so I guess Chris Barrett thought nobody would ever really figure it out, and apparently nobody else knew that he threw this in there. 
especially not Harold Ryan. He probably would have <laughs> been a little angry. Uh, but I, th- I just I, thought that I was, was neat to finally know who it was that was responsible for this and find out that it wasn't like this huge intentional decision on the part of a bunch of bungee guys. It was just Chris Barrett sneaking one little thing. In. <laughs> so, I thought it was, I thought it was, you know, the way they, they worded, worded the article. They're like, oh, it's confirming that it's true. It's like, well, everybody knew it was true. <laughs> that wasn't the part we we were questioning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so anyway, so yeah, so there's that. Then uh, one other thing I wanted to talk about was Joseph Staten sort of reemerged into the uh, the news. I guess um, he left Bungie uh, that was announced back in September, and uh, just just recently came out that he's working for Microsoft now. He's at Microsoft Studios, and he's going to be a uh, or is a senior creative director, uh, which is n- not where I was expecting him to pop up, but it wasn't out of uh, the realm of possibility. I, I can't say I'm super surprised. Joe worked with Microsoft for, I don't know, almost 10 years. Um, yeah, yeah. So I thought that was kind of cool. Everybody thought, assumed that he was going to be working at 343 when this news first popped up. Like, oh, he's, he's going to be working on the new Halo game. But uh, Frankie sort of set us straight and said, you know, he's just, he's not working directly on the Halo title. He's just, you know, uh, senior creative director. So he might come in contact with it, but he's actually working on, you know, a wide range of Microsoft Studios titles. But it's it's cool to see Joe there. Maybe we'll still see him around. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm hoping it means that that means they're going to branch out. Microsoft Game Studio is going to branch out a little bit more because they haven't really done a lot of original stuff. They usually just take other people's stuff yeah. and kind of adopt it. So I'm hoping this means they're planning on making like a real game studio where they make <laughs> you know, products. Well, so well, that's cool. So congratulations, Joe, on landing the job. I assume it's an upgrade. It, it probably had to be a pretty good upgrade to convince them to leave Bungie uh, after making yeah. Destiny. So uh, that that's pretty cool. So anyway, so uh, let's dive into some community news real quick, and then we'll get to the my stupid little quiz show thing. Uh, so this first thing is uh, Logan Lucal made the Hunter's Blade, the Hunter's Knife, and this thing looks pretty sick. Um, looks kind of sharp. Looks like it took a lot of work to make. I mean, I don't, I don't work with metal a lot, but a few times that I have, it's not the easiest thing to uh, to shape into something like that. So that's that's kind of cool to see. I love the, the sort of leather uh, cord wrapped around the handle there. Yeah. Um, hopefully, hopefully they uh, put it in with the collectors that did. <laughs> that, would, that would be pretty awesome. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like uh, that's just a Pandora's box of uh, of, of uh, bad PR right there. <laughs> Lawsuit waiting to happen. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's a good idea, Zeno. So you should you should mail that in. Put a want to put on a little suggestion card for the suggestion box. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get right on that. Well, but uh, let's see. We've also got uh, some fan art. Uh, I stumbled across this piece by a. Dalton Pinkerinha, you say his name, and I was just blown away. I really dug the uh, the art style here. I, um, it's probably not done justice on the, the this low resolution Twitch stream. So uh, if you haven't uh, already, search go back a couple days on uh, the DBO front page and find the link to this because the the full resolution image is just pretty awesome. I wouldn't mind having a poster of that. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. And uh, from what I can tell, uh, this same guy's working on another Destiny piece, so I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how that whatever that turns out to be, if it's in the same style or not. This guy's clearly got some sort of talent. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, now we've got this is uh, probably Firestream's wrist. Uh, he he just got a pebble. And uh, whipped up two really quick Destiny uh, watch faces for it. 
so if uh, if you have a Pebble, find the link again on the DBO front page and go download your Destiny watch. Uh, I don't have a Pebble, but if I did, that was probably what I would put on it. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Uh, these next three images are just some uh, phone wallpaper backgrounds from S Danny C, uh, who's a Reddit user. It's pretty cool backgrounds for your phone. And then this is uh, this is a painting I stumbled upon uh, over at Deviant Art yesterday. And it's uh, it's by Supremacy Rain, and I just really dug dug the uh, the art style. Almost kind of a um, uh, not not sort of watercolor ish. Uh, I don't know. I just like the soft edges, but that'll yeah. sort of that's it, it. You don't see a lot of paintings that people. Yeah, for fan art for stuff. That, that takes an extra effort, and I, I also like how the sort of hunters incorporated into the the, the large Destiny tricorn in the back. Uh, that's kind of neat. But anyway, yeah. all right. So here we go. There we go. Beat the chat. All right. I gotta grab my laptop. Yeah, yeah. You gotta. So here's here's how this is gonna work. Let me. Look at that. Here's how this is going to work. I am going to ask seven Bungie-related questions, not necessarily Destiny-related or Halo-related. It's going to span the full history of Bungie. Uh, I'm going to ask seven questions, and uh, the way this is going to play out is Xenos is going to get a head start uh, because he is one man. He's working alone against the chat room, or the chat room, wherever it is on your browser. Um, and so he has to uh, type into the chat as well. All answers have to come in the form of the Twitch chat. Uh, so, so that way I can sort of keep track of which answer comes first. So I'm going to ask the question, and then I'm going to put it up on the board. And I have this really cool new layout to use. Check that. Oh, whoa. Hold on. Let me fix this. Bam. There we go. Here's my chat interface. All right. So I've got the chat over there, my scoreboard right here, and then if you look in the top corner over there, that's where the question is going to pop up, and Xenos is right above me. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to ask the question aloud, and I'm going to paste it up into the. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to enter it into the Twitch chat. So Xenos has a, a decent advantage of answering the question first, but again, he's only one man. So he might not know some of these more obscure things. The Twitch chat, as soon as you hear the question or see the question pop up anywhere, you can answer it and earn a point for the chat. And then after seven questions, uh, whoever has the most wins. And the prize uh, this week was donated by my friend The Outer Limits, and it is a $10 Microsoft point card. So hopefully Xenos. Well, I know you have an Xbox. So hopefully the chat, uh, all you guys have Xboxes or can use Microsoft points. Uh, and how that works, if the chat wins, I'll ask a bonus question, and whoever answers that first, not Xenos, uh, will get the the points. So this is probably gonna break at some point somehow. So bear with me. I'm test. I'm still testing this out. Uh, but if it works out, this is something that I would like to do on a weekly basis, uh, provided that I can keep coming up with new questions. Now, I know that um, the lag between the chat and the stream can sort of be off, so that's why I'm going to input the question to the chat sort of after a brief second or two. So I'm going to give Xenos a little bit of a head start, but not as much as the, the latency on this stream, because I think it's a little bit longer than I was uh, hoping for. So, yeah. all right, so let's get... Because it was a minute. Yeah. All right, let me pull up my questions. And let's start with an easy one, shall we? <laughs> all right. Now, remember, all... Doo -doo -doo. All answers must come from the Twitch chat. And don't just try and spam it with a bunch of different guesses. 
because uh, then I'll just <laughs> ignore them. Especially you, see this. All right. So the first <laughs> question. This is probably going to be a pretty quick one, but is I lost it. Oh, name the person responsible for creating Gnop. Let me see if I can get this up there as well. Mm. All right. Xenos, you have been bested by Padraig. <laughs> yes, Gnop was created by Alex Seropian. Um, and this was, I think it was he made it before he technically created Bungie as well. Uh, so so maybe that's not technically a bungee question, but it's clo close enough. But yeah, Alex, uh, Alex Ropian created Gnop. Padraig, you just earned one point for the chat. So Xenos, you're already down one, man. <laughs> You've got some catching up to do. All right. So next question. Um, let's see. Bungie made Halo games from 2004 to 2010 in a building called Bungie Towers. What is the street address for Bungie Towers? Alright. Do you know this, Xenos? I remember it had a creepy basement. So what? That's all I remember. I remember it had a creepy basement. That's about all I remember. <laughs> all right. Oh wow! I'm surprised more people didn't know this. Ooh. Brayton, Brayton is correct, or close enough. It's actually four three four Kirkland Way, but I'll give him. Credit. Yes, Bungie Towers uh, is the building Bungie made Halo. Let's see, they made Halo 2 and 3 in that, right? Or parts of yeah. 2. Yeah. Shortly after 2. Uh, but yeah, it's 434 Kirkland Way, and that's actually where 343 Studios is now at. Um, in addition to other buildings, 343 is a little, a little too big for just that building. But, alright, so Brayton... You have earned another point for the chat. So you know, so you're in trouble, man. Whoa! And <laughs> I broke something. There we go. <laughs> All right. Next question. Hmm. Do, do, do. All right. Now remember. I don't know that you're not using Google, so I'm assuming the chat is using Google. <laughs> and if you, uh, as long as you uh, play it off cool, you might be able to use Google as well. But the next question, what was the original code name for Halo before Jason Jones changed it to Blam? All right. Complete guess. You can okay. You can guess more. Uh, although you probably won't guess this. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, Blame's the only one I knew. Ooh, mm. I, I should probably try and. Zach Dark's close, and I might have to give it to Zach Dark if nobody else comes up with the correct answer. No, it's not Pimps at Sea, Brightson. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. It was kind of gross. Ragashingo has right. it. Ragashingo yep. is correct. The original code name for Halo was Monkey Nuts. <laughs> and Jason Jones changed it to Blam because he didn't want to tell his mom he was working on Monkey Nuts. <laughs> Blam. Man, I think Blam was also a better code name for Halo anyway. A little more pertinent. <laughs> <laughs> so they could both work as expletives so you know anyway uh -oh. <laughs> all 
All right, Xenos, you're in trouble, man. <laughs> you have to get the next four. I keep switching. Here, there we go. I need to stop using my number pad. My number pad is my shortcut button for, for changing scenes. I keep typing in numbers and switching things on me. All right, next question. Hmm. Do, do, do. All right, here's a good one. What is step four of Bungie's seven-step plan for world domination? Oh, come on, copy. Step four. This is one of the more obscure ones. <laughs> Malagate might be close with snacks. As you know, launching everyone know, into a slingshot is later. It's, that's like six or seven. Yeah, it's, so. that's. I think that's seven. Pizza? No, not quite. Although I'm sure Bungie guys do enjoy pizza snacks. Obscure. This is this is four. I'm surprised nobody's mentioned Ling Ling's head yet. That is not the correct answer, but Xenos is close enough. <laughs> Something about Chinese food. Yes. The answer is here, let me put it up. Yes, I'll I'll give it to Xenos only because he's losing, and I want this to be a little bit closer <laughs> than, than a, a clean sweep. Yes, step four is acquire strangely addictive Chinese food company, which Bungie listed as complete on one of their checklists. I don't know when that yeah, happened. Yeah, I noticed that. Uh, I'd like to hear the history of that. Um, as far as I know, maybe I, they hired the chef. Yeah, yeah, maybe maybe that was it. Um, but yeah, step step four of Bungie's seven-step plan is acquire strangely addictive Chinese food company. All right, so that brings Xenos to one, since I'm being generous. <laughs> <laughs> Ragashingo was was close behind with uh, the actual answer, but uh, I'm I'm gonna make an executive decision and sort of give Xenos the point. He got close enough. All right. <laughs> Next question. Which Bungie game was originally printed with a serious uninstaller bug? And Xenos just barely beat everybody else out <laughs> with the correct answer. Technically, the name is Myth 2 Soul Blider, but <laughs> I'll give you credit. Myth 2. All right. Yes. All right. That that was a particularly easy question. A lot of people got that. Malagate, you were wrong. It wasn't Myth 1. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had Marathon 2 written out, and I was like, no. no. It's Myth, not Marathon. <laughs> <laughs> nope. It wasn't, wasn't until later. Uh, and for anyone, it sounds like a lot of people in the chat are familiar with this, but for anyone not aware, uh, when Myth 2 was first printed uh, at, you know, whatever CD replicating factory boxes and all that, uh, it had a, a really serious bug in it uh, that one of the, uh, the marketing people figured out uh, that when, if you install the game to like, you know, the root of your hard drive and then go to uninstall it, uh, Myth 2 just completely wipes that that drive that um, I guess directory yeah that's the right term uh, myth, myth wipes that directory which would make a lot of people really mad I think it only uh, ended up impacting that that one person that discovered the the, the bug in marketing yeah but uh, the bungee guys basically had to go and like replace all of the discs by hand so there's a picture of Jason Jones somewhere like opening up Myth 2 boxes and replacing discs with the, the bug free version. Um. <laughs> and I, I think I read it cost a million dollars to replace all of the discs. 
Which yeah, that's at that's, the time that was a lot of money for them. Yeah, especially yeah for Bungie. Yeah, I mean you could almost wonder if that's eventually what pushed them to to having to uh, be purchased by Microsoft. Yeah. Uh, so, computer bugs, serious business. <laughs> but anyway, that that brings Xenos up to two points. All right. So let me dig up another trivia question here. Let's see. <laughs> Ooh. Here's another. Yeah, I'll go with this easiest one. Bungie had a game canceled in 2002 during the development of Halo 2. What was the working title of that canceled game? And I didn't even finish saying the question, and Xenos already got it right. <laughs> hey, yes. we have to make this a. <laughs> A uh, nail biter. Yeah, I, I guess so. This last question is gonna have to be kind of tough. <laughs> but yes, the the answer is Phoenix. I also would have accepted Breach, uh, was another code name for the game, uh, and some fans called it TTFKAM2, which was the team formerly known as Myth Two, uh, because that's sort of how it was referred in uh, in some of the Bungie Weekly updates. Um, <laughs> Maligate points out that you did misspell Phoenix, but I think I'll give you the credit anyway. <laughs> I, it's interesting too because we just barely found out the first details about Phoenix that we ever found out. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Earlier this summer, uh, right? That was the, the Jason Jones. Uh, yeah, the the IG. Yeah. And interview. <laughs> was kind of cool. There was actually some uh, some Craig Mullins art that I think was from Breach slash Phoenix. It was all sort of uh, medieval fantasy kind of art uh, that's out there if you search for it in the right places. But yes, this brings us to a nail biter. We are at three and three. I've only got one more question. Actually, I have a couple more questions, but I'm going to limit it to seven this week. Otherwise, I won't have any questions for next week. <laughs> um... So anyway, so I'll, let, let me pick a good one. Do, do, do. All right. Here we go. This one requires three answers. It's, it's three things. You have to enter, enter them all on the same line. And that includes you as well, the chat. I want all three answers on the same line uh, so that you can't just keep spitballing Thanks. Here is your question. Bungie has published three non-Bungie games. Name them. Bungie West doesn't count, right? <laughs> no, they made Oni. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Well, but Drake, you're actually closer than you think. But I think I might just have to call this one. Nobody, nobody's got my third, third, uh, third answer here. So I'll have to go to another question. You give up, Xenos? All yeah, right. I can't think of the third one. Okay, so the, the three answers I was looking for... Here, let me copy and paste them. Weekend Warrior was the third game. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it was, it was made by a, a studio called Pangea. 
uh, and it was this really small, uh, questionable con questionable quality uh, packing game for for some uh, Macintosh video card. Uh, but it was supposedly like the first 100% 3D game, according to the creator, because even the credits were in 3D. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so uh, somewhere out there, there is a Weekend Warrior disc, and it says it's published by Bungie on there. Uh, that was the answer I was looking for, so thankfully I have more backup questions. Let me see. Um, I think that might be a little bit too obscure. All right. So here's the last question. So in 1997, Bungie opened a second development house called Bungie West to make Oni. In what city was Bungie West located? What city? Bungie East at the time was in Chicago, Zach Dark. And Xenos got it. It was San Jose. I need some like victory music or something here. It's it's, it's a little quiet. <laughs> so everybody, Get give some final fan. Yeah, yeah give uh, give you know so a round of applause. That that's what I need. I need some some applause music. I've got that <laughs> right at the beginning of DBO TV. I should I should pull that out again. Uh, or I need some like sort of like prices right kind of jingles. But yes, San Jose. <laughs> Wait, people are still guessing. <laughs> Xenos wins. <laughs> and he's accusing us of collusion. All right. Yes. Collusion. So that brings Xenos up to four points. Woo! With which he will take victory. And the $10 Microsoft points card, courtesy of Z Outer Limits. So thank you, Z Outer Limits, for, for donating that prize. Um, I don't know. I, I think this was kind of fun. So yeah. I know you're going to say it was fun because you got a prize. <laughs> you better say well, it was I would have <laughs> enjoyed it even if I had been shut out. So. Okay. <laughs> Those first three questions had me worried. I was like, oh, man, I'm not as big a bunch of fans as I thought. Uh, and those weren't... I have some even harder questions here, <laughs> but... Uh, but anyway, congratulations, Zenos. I will email you, you your prize. I, yeah, I have your email address. I will email you the code. Uh, big thanks to the chat. You almost defeated him. You were close. You were close. But anyway... Well, anyway, that will pretty much do it for this episode. Uh, like I said, I hope everybody enjoyed the little quiz show thing. I definitely want to add some music and sound effects to that. Uh, it should make it a little better. Um, if you have any feedback, definitely give it to me over at uh, on the forums. Hold on, let me switch to that view. There we go. Destiny.bungie.org slash forum. I would especially love to hear feedback about you know this this game show stuff uh, and also as always uh, we've got YouTube and Twitch channel URLs that I should probably put down in the show notes so that you can actually click on them instead of just trying to vainly click on the video uh, if nothing else you can find DBOTV over at destiny.bungie.org slash DBOTV you can also find us on facebook.com I have some work to do on that it's been acting a little weird lately but our twitter seems to be working fine we are at dbo tweets and i am at ncsu duncan do you have a twitter xenos account twitter i do account? it's xenos kb xenos like kb <laughs> at, hold on here let me at xenos kb that right 
You probably, I don't know, you probably can't see that. <laughs> Zenos KB. That's his Twitter account. If you did Zenos KB, you got it right. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so give him a follow. Uh, and if nothing else, I will hopefully see you guys next week for another round of DBO TV and another round of, uh, of Beat the Chat. I don't know who my guest next week is, but uh, I might have to tell whoever it is to study up on uh, Bungie history <laughs> first. Just to, just to make sure that the uh, the chat doesn't win out uh, too much again. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you uh, thank you for joining me, Xenos. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. It was great. And uh, I'll definitely have to get you on the show again sometime in the future. Um, we've got nine months to go between now and when Destiny comes out. So I'm, yeah, I'm sure I'll run through my list of people willing to actually come on DBO TV, and then I'll come back around to you. I, s- I still think Deej would probably be willing to get, come on here if we, you planned it out enough. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. At some point, I'll I'll harangue him and harass him into coming on the show. But uh, thanks for joining me, and now I'm going to close this out with some awesome credits. Let's do this. Do, do, do. All right. Bye, Xenos. I'm hanging up on you now. Yep. Bob Parker, and I'm certainly not Drew Carey, but thank you for watching.